Hello, Faith Life Church. This is Pastor Gary. I am standing currently at the farthest northwest corner of the 48 states. I am in Olympic National Park in Washington State. It's absolutely gorgeous, as you can see. And while I was here, I had a dream, and the Lord spoke to me something that I wanted to get to you right away. So we're going to cover that today. And to find out how this applies, I want you to get in your Bibles right now and turn to Joshua chapter 6. We're going to look at a story you've heard probably your entire life about the walls came tumbling down. But there's a point that the Lord brought to me in this dream that I want to make sure that we understand as a church body and as a body of Christ that we understand and we act on. So beginning to set the story up, we go to chapter six, and it says this, that Jericho, this is verse number one, by the way, Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. At this time, Jericho had heard of the Red Sea parting, and when they knew the Israelites were heading their way, they shut the walls and locked themselves in. It says in verse two, then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its mighty fighting men. I want you to underline that, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men, do this for six days, have seven priests carrying, uh, carrying trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priest blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the walls of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every one of them. Now. This is what the instruction was. In Joshua chapter 6, verse uh, number 20, we find this as the result. Now they're walking around, marching around the city now for those seven days. We now take you to the seventh day in verse number 20. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in, and they took the city. Now this is a very important message because the church loves to sing and praise God for the victory that Jesus had inside the four walls. We love to shout, we love to praise, but a lot of people are not seeing the victory and the result of the kingdom in their life, I believe, because of what the instruction was to the people of Israel. If you notice, shouting was part of the instruction. And of course, Jesus won the victory. The walls are down. In fact, what the Lord gave me the dream is, the walls are down. It's time to move out. Let me say that again. He said, the walls are down. It's time to move out. Now, in this story, we see that when they shouted, the walls collapsed, but that's not where they stopped. They didn't have a big shouting party and just passed the iced tea. They, they did something. They went somewhere. The Bible says that they went in. They charged into the city and took the city. In fact, just say that with me. They took the city. So the walls collapsed and they charged in and they did what? They took the city. Now this is the same principle that we need to operate in and this is what the Lord was reminding us of, I believe in my dream, the walls are down. Satan has no more authority. Now notice it says this, when he talked to Jericho, God said that I've given over the king and the fighting men into your hand. Now here's the problem. Christians love to shout, but I believe they're still afraid of the king and the fighting men, meaning that Satan is the king, the authority over this dominion. The fighting men are his demons. I believe Christians, most of them are still nervous and still think that Satan has some kind of power that they're afraid of. They're afraid to charge in, afraid to advance because they're afraid that the king and the demons still have some kind of authority. Now, it's okay to shout in church, but friend, when you leave the four walls of the church, you have an assignment, take territory. You are to take dominion of the earth for the kingdom of God and bring those good results God wants to see take place. Now, if we look over in Matthew, we find that Jesus here talks to Peter about the authority he's given you. Yes, you, the church. He was talking to Jesus uh, about life and Jesus said, hey, Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter answers this way in chapter 16 and verse number 15. Jesus says, what about you, Peter? Who do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon. He said, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. 
and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. I love how some versions say the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys, that means the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now here's the thing, friend, gates are not offensive, meaning they're not an offensive weapon. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But yet Christians, many believe that Satan has the authority to, re to prevail against them. That sickness, poverty, disease, these things still have authority to interrupt their life and to cause destruction. Friend, Jesus has given you the keys of the kingdom. He has given you the authority to tread upon scorpions and serpents. And the Bible says nothing by any means shall harm you. You say, well, why, why do most people not live with the victory that we see in scriptures? Why do most people not have that like we see in the Bible? Well, James 4 says this, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So number one, it's not your authority. I mean, you're operating in authority, but it's the authority of the church of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus. Submitting yourself to God, places you in that position to operate in life from that stance, that position of authority. And he goes on and says, of course, that whatever you bind, we just read that in Matthew, whatever you bind, notice it says you, whatever you bind on earth, heaven backs up. What you loose on earth, heaven backs up. Friend, the walls are down. The walls are down. The kingdom of God is advancing and taking territory. And the Bible clearly says that you are to go in and take it. Let me say it again. I believe this is what God wanted us to get across today. You are to go in and take it. Now here's the problem. I remember a few years ago I was riding my bike and of course I do ride quite a bit and out of the corner of my eye I hear this and see this giant dog come woof you know this big dog just slobber coming at me full speed and my heart began to race and all of a sudden the dog got to the property line right where my bicycle was riding by and he slams on the brakes and just starts yapping at me I then began to see the flags for the owner had placed in the in the yard what we call an invisible fence. The flags were training the dog that if he goes past that position, he endures a shock. He has learned not to cross the invisible fence. Now, eventually, of course, the owner is told that the dog will stop without seeing the flags. The flags are for training. Then after the dog is trained, you pull the flags up and the dog will not cross that line. But there's nothing there, right? But he's learned not to cross the line. I believe this is what the enemy does in our lives. He has an invisible fence. I believe that, I believe we all have barriers that we have to cross and we are all nervous about that. But I believe the enemy has set up an invisible fence. He's trained you to fear. And let me say this, fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. Fear lies to you that says Satan hit the king and his men, his demons, somehow still have authority over you. But the Bible says the walls are down. Years ago, I was facing, well, quite a bit of pressure as a pastor and as a businessman, and the Lord gave me this particular event. It happened at a provision conference in 2010 as I was preaching, and let's find out what happened on that date. In my Bible, in a very difficult day, I had a dream one night. I wrote the dream in the front of my Bible because this is what the dream was. I was standing on a hill with a sword in my hand. Below me was an entire army with their swords raised. And the, the word of the Lord, a voice in my dream says this, don't underestimate yourself, Gary. And in that dream, I took my sword and I began to scream the word Thor, T-H-O-R, Thor! And I began to run down the hillside towards this army by myself with my sword extended. And I thought, I, I, we have some people in the church that understand languages. I said, what is, the, what is that all about? What is the word Thor? And he said, it's a son of thunder. It's about thunder. Don't 
underestimate yourself. When the enemy sees you coming, Gary, it sounds like thunder. I wrote that. <laughs> is that really thunder or is that you guys? <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yes! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you! Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! So you can see what, what God was telling me. He said, Gary, they can't tell. When they see you, they see Jesus. They see the anointing. They see the authority of the kingdom of God. Even though I faced an entire army, God was teaching me in this dream that I had that, Gary, don't be afraid. Fear is a liar. You have the authority. The walls are down. There is no protection for Satan. The Bible says you resist him. He flees from you. And the, the word Greek there literally means he flees in terror. He does not want to pass that invisible fence. He doesn't want to and get a shock of his life. He has to back off. So God is reminding me, Gary, you're one person, but to them, the king and his army, you look like an army because you have the authority. The walls are down. Listen, the Lord spoke to me at the beginning of this year and said, this is a year of urgency. What does urgency mean to you and me? It means take territory. It means it's not just time to celebrate the walls collapsing in our church. It means, friend, we are to be about the Father's business and we are to advance and take it. We are to move out and take and capture the, what God has set before us. The walls are down. So many people I see in Christianity are, quote, praying for breakthrough. Where's the anointing? Where can I find the power of God? Traveling the country, trying, do you have a word for me? Friend, I'm all for the gifts of the Spirit and the offices of the church, but the bottom line is you already have the authority. You already have the anointing. You already have the grace of God. You don't have to look any further. The Bible says the Spirit of God is in you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. The grace of God you already possess. But I also learned through my life that the grace does not manifest until I actually engage the battle. You can't just sit there and sing in church. Friend, it's when you step out into taking it is when the grace of God, the anointing shows up. A lot of people tell me I'm bored in church. Well, that's because you are the church. If your life is boring, don't blame the, the assembly of the, of the saints. Friend, you're to live an exciting life and you're to live a life of taking territory because the walls are down. See, here's the difference. Instead of looking for a breakthrough, you need to understand you are someone's breakthrough. See, you are someone's deliverer. The Bible clearly says we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That we wade in Satan's territory and set the captives free. You are someone's breakthrough. On this trip, we had the privilege, Drenda and I were praying about where should we stay this next night, hotel, where, we, where should we stay? And that night, all the rooms were booked, but we heard of a little cabin that a widow had. And so we called her and she was pleased to have us come over. We began to talk to her and in tears, she said, I'm going to Costco tomorrow. You know, it's hard to live on social security, but I prayed, I said, God, send, send someone to my little cabin. I don't advertise, I don't have a computer, I don't have a website, but Lord, send someone to my cabin that I'd have the money to go to Costco tomorrow. Guess what? That's where we were. You see, at that moment, we were God's agent to her, her supply. You need to understand that you're someone's breakthrough as well. God wants to send you into the city to bring deliverance and freedom to the people there and to help people. You're someone's breakthrough. I wanna show you a video of a family that found themselves in a very, well, a tough situation, owing over a million dollars in IRS debt. Yet their story doesn't end there and neither does yours. Let's take a look at this particular story and how they came out had a business that I was, was running at the time and I was still working full time. Uh, my business was, uh, was in real estate. I had uh, over 50 rental units. We were what, maybe five or six years into our, our marriage. Um, things were going great financially. Then um, the uh, real estate market crashed and I got a phone call from the Department of Commerce, state of Ohio. 
Mr. Dalton, we have a fine here in your name and your company's name for $1.2 million. How will you be paying this? And I was like, uh, let me get back to you. So that started the spiraling, if you will, downward. When I got that phone call, I was like, okay, there's gotta be some sort of mistake, blah, blah, blah. Let me get with the attorney and try to get this figured out. The market just steadily continued to go down. I had, as I mentioned earlier, 50 plus rental units. When the market crashed, some of my interest rates adjusted on some of those properties. Of course, a lot of my tenants lost their jobs. So when they lost their jobs, I couldn't pay the notes. I was robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of thing, and it just kind of imploded and self-destructed, ate itself alive. Dawn was able to stay home with the kids, raise the kids, because we had more than enough money coming in and so forth, and, uh, you know, strong six-figure income. But it got to the point where, you know, I started to get in foreclosure notices, and I was hiding them from her and all of those things. You know, I ended up having to short sale some of the properties. And, you know, of course, there was deficiency balances with those and so forth that had to be addressed and, uh, you know, taken care of. So we had a, a big pile of debt to, to deal with that I knew was gonna come out on the other end, but she didn't know. I knew rock bottom was, is when I had to, I had, I pawned my wedding to get gasoline to go to work. I had to take a job that I hated, but I knew I needed to provide for my family. As we continued to journey through this uh, bottom spot and, and reading and learning and, and uh, you know, just gathering more and more of Pastor Gary's teachings, we said, um, you know, we're gonna throw ourselves into this and, and, and see what this is all about. Fortunately for us, there was a financial freedom class. I didn't wanna go at first, because um, I thought, you know, what are they gonna teach me? You know, I, I've done this. And I was one of those guys that, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm like this. Yeah, for the know. record, I signed us up for it and told him we were doing <laughs> we were it. were going. But then, you know, as they started to go through things and we were watching Pastor Gary, I was like, Hey, he's got a little something there. <laughs> and uh, then as we dug into it even even deeper, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's there's more there. There was a, a point in there where we were like, it was it like flipped the switch yes. for us. It, it, it's like, okay, this is clear now. Okay, yeah. this is what we're doing. And yes. this is the time frame we're gonna do it in. And click, 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 there it goes. I mean, if you do, if you just follow the steps, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. it's all there. Yeah. Just put the work yeah. in. It wasn't easy. I mean, there were times where we were like, what do you mean? Not going out to eat tonight? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not in the budget. <laughs> Not in the budget. But I mean, we worked hard and, you know, it, it paid off. Mm -hmm. We learned and applied those things, put them into practice. Uh, things began to happen for us. Just during the 12 weeks, mm -hmm. like as we walked through those steps, we were even finding thousands of dollars yes. just in things that Pastor Gary was teaching specifically. Like as mm -hmm. we walked through the weeks, mm -hmm. we were like, wait a minute, because my husband is a pretty tight budgeter. I mean, he knows where every single penny goes. But then as we started releasing some of the religious thinking and our past things and just opening ourselves up to what Pastor Gary was teaching and trusting in the process, all of a sudden we were like, wait a second. If, if we do this, if we move that, if we, you know, and, and all this money was found, we kept working the program, working the program. I had a prized possession of a Rolex Submariner. I even uh, sold my Rolex to pay off the debt. And uh, we were able to discuss things with the Department of Commerce. Uh, they, that was a big load right there, to be honest with you, because we went from, we went from having a fine of $1.2 million down to $6,000. And I said, that's not, that's nothing but the grace of God. They even gave us six years to pay it back. We sold our, our three rental properties that we had for the past 10 years. Well, they God all, woke you. Yes, 
God woke you at like three o'clock in the morning yeah. and was like, I said, uh, it, here's an idea and a concept, yeah. Yeah. which is huge in our family. We talk about ideas and concepts. Yeah. We pray for ideas and concepts all of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's time to get rid of these properties. You paid cash for them. You, had, you, you don't owe anything for them. People have been renting them from you for, for the past eight, 10 years. And, uh, and the market know, had hit top. It, it, was, it was topped out. Yeah. And uh, we sold every one of them, paid off all of our debt, We've paid off over what is the over, over one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in uh, in in debt. The financial freedom class got it started on that pathway, and one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars later, in you know a little over three and a half years. Yes, I will forever be grateful for it. That's there's no uh, there's no doubt about it that she made me go. <laughs> <laughs> Gary and I love to get in the great outdoors and just get refreshed and relaxed. But even greater than that, we love hearing the stories of people's lives that have been changed by the kingdom of God. I have such a story now I want to read to you. This is a woman who, over, who overcame cancer. This is a woman who overcame cancer, and it's just an amazing story. Good morning, Drenda. I'm sitting here this morning as I watch the sunrise praying for your family. We walked in faith and took a trip to Hawaii with our girls and arrived two days ago. We surprised our girls. Kingdom Heart Design, the business that we discovered because of your uh, teaching, made it happen along with many other sweet, amazing Godwinks. It's our first vacation in six years. We are taking back territory. We are still walking this thing out, but my gratitude is beyond words in the Webster. We have many Godwinks in this faith walk to Hawaii along with opposition, but we overcome. We are celebrating big C, Christ, is greater than little C, cancer. God is so faithful. Our daughters don't know it yet, but we are renewing our vows of 25 years with them. Heaven is going to be speaking a blessing over them during our vows on Monday. New vows for new beginnings. We truly feel like He is making all things new on so many levels. Your ministry is a big part of why we are here. We continue to partner with you in prayer and we can't wait to see what the future holds. With long life, I will satisfy him. Aloha. Stories like this keep us going and make us just keep doing what we do, preaching and teaching the kingdom of God because we love to see people experience God's goodness, his faithfulness, and the restoration that Jesus paid for. What a great story. Don't you love to hear the impossible win don't you like to see the underdog win? I, I do, I love stories like that. I love to see football games where the underdog tears up the lead. You know, I just love to see people win in life when everyone expects them to lose. And you know what? I don't care who expects you to lose. Maybe your friends and family, maybe you have a hit, maybe you expect yourself to lose. You need to stop that. You need to understand the walls are down and only you are limiting what you can have. Only your thoughts are limiting what you can possess. And I believe the Lord gave me the dream, the walls are down to inspire not only myself, but as your pastor to inspire you to take territory this year. The grace of God is here. You have been given the anointing of God. You have an assignment. As we step into that assignment, I believe you're gonna find your fulfillment, the contentment of life. I believe we're never designed to sit around and drink tea and just kind of wait for life to pass by. I believe the journey is the most fulfilling and exciting part of life and especially when you see the anointing of God show up in your life and God do crazy things, you know, and you see breakthrough for people you touch and people you speak to, and you have the joy of sharing the good news of the kingdom. But remember this, we all face walls. We've been trained with walls. No, no, no. We've heard no more than our life than yes. In fact, one study proved growing up that most kids hear the word no, like, I don't know, 100 to 200 times more than yes, or even 1,000 times more. We're always told, no, you can't have that. You can't buy that. You can't afford that. You can't do that. Friend, you've been raised in a no culture. Can't do that. But I'm telling you, in the culture of God and God's kingdom, the walls are down. You can say yes. In fact, the Bible says every promise of God is yes. Well, there's about 7,000 of them, and I'm Sure, you can find one that fits your situation, and you can have a story like the ones we've talked about today. I want you to remember this as we close today, and that is this, that you sound like thunder. <laughs> you sound like thunder, and where thunder is, there's lightning, there's power, there's energy, and you sound like lightning, thunder. 
to the enemy. Remember, God said to, Jer uh, to Joshua, I've given unto your hands. Now, this is before they even went into battle. I have, see, he said, see, he said, see, I've given you the city. Uh, the city was still standing there. The stone walls were still, but he said, see, I have given you the city. Its king and its fighting men are no longer a threat. They didn't have to do anything. They marched around, confidence in God. You say, oh, well, I'm not good at something. They didn't even have to fight the battle. All they had to do was to gather the spoils. Let me say it again. They didn't have to fight the battle. All they had to do was gather the spoils. And if you'll change your thinking, then you know what? God wants to put in front of you a lot of different opportunities. He never leads you into conflict for destruction. Understand that. He leads you into, into battle, conflict for your victory and the spoils. Always. But as you approach the battle, Satan will always try to intimidate you to remind you of what was passed, that you can't, he still has authority, the walls are still up. My friend, he's lying to you. You need to remind him, as the Lord gave me in a dream here on this trip, the walls are down. This is a year of urgency, the Lord told me. This is a year to move out. So I wanna inspire you. We're about halfway through the year right now, and I believe, listen, check yourself. Are you advancing? Are you taking territory? If not, you still have half a year left to go to engage yourself in this situation and take territory. As your pastor, your friend, I wanna encourage you, you can do better than you've ever dreamt. I believe you're bigger than you think you are. I know you're, you're in a place God's placed you to win in, not to destruct in. And I know as you trust God, just remember what he said. He's given you power to tread upon the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. And he's talking about you. The walls are down, the king and his men have no more power. How much territory do you want to take? I'll be looking forward to seeing you next week. But let's pray first right now. If you're here and you say, Pastor, you know what? I don't know the Lord. I don't know. What, I, don't, I need to know God. I need to know the God of power you're talking about. Well, that's simple. Very simple. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of Jesus, just make a choice, has the legal right to be part of the kingdom of God and a member of his household. Now, I'm going to ask you to just stand with me right now. And as you stand, heads bowed, I want to just ask you one question. I want to ask you, is this you? Are you in this story? Are you the one that says, I need to know the God that has given me the power to tread upon the enemy? I need to know the God that has brought the walls down. But I certainly need to know who I am in Christ. I need to know who and what I am and what I can do. And I'd say amen to that. But if you say, that's me, Pastor. I need to know God. I want you to just raise your hand right now just to mark the spot. See, why do, I, why do I raise my hand? I want you to mark the spot because Monday's coming. Pressures of life are going to be there every day. I want you to remember, I raised my hand. God is with me. The king has no more power. Satan. The demons have no more power. The walls of impossibility are torn down. I can now do all things through Christ who strengthens me every day. All right, let's pray together. Say these words with me. Say, Father, your Bible says that if I simply call on the name of Jesus, that you receive me. You make me brand new on the inside. You fill me with your Holy Spirit. You show me how to live life. I become a part of your family, a citizen of your great kingdom. So on this day, let it be recorded in heaven that I said yes. And I praise you for it and I thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. I look forward to seeing you, as I said, next week. But until then, get ready to march, move out, take territory, because the walls are down.